Hey everyone, how's it going? Clifton here with another video. In today's video, we're going to be continuing on from the previous topic in which we covered my IRL streaming setup. So if you're interested in that as a topic, wanting to get out, do some in real life street photography, or maybe just chatting, then this is the video to watch. That previous video, it does cover what I have on me when I'm out on the field, but in today's video, we're more into the nuts and bolts of the software that I use. So let's firstly do a recap of what I've got, which is these two things here. So I've got two phones, very important. The main phone that I use is the iPhone 11. This is the one that I use for streaming. And then I have the backup phone, which is the Samsung Galaxy S9. That's what I use for support. So that's how I start my streams, end my streams, do raids, do the support features that I need when it comes to streaming. Because once you've started streaming with the main phone, uh, you really can't touch it. There is a little change up in the setup today. Now, I did mention in the previous video that uh, battery life is kind of important. Now, what I have got is I got a little dongle here. I think it came in after I recorded the last video. And this dongle it enables me to charge the phone while also maintaining the good audio. Very important to have some kind of external microphone, a power mic with this setup because the one in the phone isn't all that great. The other one is connected to my 10,000 milliampere battery. That is really important if you want to go past like two, three hours of live streaming just to have a backup battery of some kind. And I've got both phones connected to it. So it's one little change with this current setup that I'm, I'm able to keep these charged. And I suggest having the backup battery plugged in right from the beginning because I did try plug it in later, I forgot and then I lost the connection. Uh, if you just keep it plugged in, you don't have any issues like that. On the support phone, we have IRL chat. I did mention that in the other video, but that is the one where you run commands, text to chat so you can hear chat, you can read chat on the second phone. These are things that I covered in the other video. Okay, so we're gonna jump into the streaming app that I use on this phone. But this one I found to be really good. It has all the features I need for IRL streaming from my phone. We've opened up Larix Broadcaster and I just realized I got my headphones on. I don't need those. It's just habit from streaming. <laughs> okay, so let's just continue on from where we were before. Anyway, on the left hand side, you can see where our switch camera views is. You'll be able to see um, my streaming software, which I'm currently using to record this video. It's called OBS Studio. We'll get into that. We'll get into that in probably the next video. Now along the right hand side, there are some menu options. You can take screen caps, which is pretty handy when you're out and about. Let's say if you want to take a photo with the camera that you're using to stream from, but you don't have a, like a spare camera, it's nice to have. If you do need audible privacy, let's say you're gonna sneeze or something, there's a button here to mute the audio. So I'll just click that and as you can see there, it's highlighted, the audio is now muted for your stream. We're gonna get into the settings. But in a nutshell, the way that I connect from my phone to my computer in office is through a technology called SRT. So there's quite a little bit of stuff involved with setting that up. I'll probably have some links here somewhere for you to look into that side of things. We're gonna jump into the video section. Now, as you can see here, a lot of options. We'll just go through each one. So the initial camera is pretty straightforward. Do you want to have it on the selfie camera first? Doesn't really matter, it's just based on your personal preference. And then the back camera, so I've got that set to ultra wide. Very important if you want that wide look that I have on my streams. And I'm able to do that because this particular phone, iPhone 11, has two lenses on it. It's got your standard and it's also got the ultra wide option, which is why I'm not using the Samsung Galaxy S9 for streaming. So it just has the one lens on there. I'm not able to get an ultra wide look. And I think it just works well for what I do in terms of POV, point of view, street photography, streams. Now resolution, I've got this set to 720p. If you try and do anything higher than that, it's really hard to burn up a lot more data. It could be harder for your connection to work if you're trying to do 1080p or, or more. Frame rate, I've got at 30 frames per second, which is kind of the standard for a mobile phone. Multi-camera capture, you can have that on. So you can have either as picture-in-picture, side-by-side. And I'll leave that to you to play around with. In my case, it doesn't really work because I have the phone attached to my chest. So if I did have both cameras on, you know, most of the time people will be just looking at my chest <laughs> and also looking at what I'm taking photos of. of. Uh, whereas if I had my phone more like here, out in front of me somehow, then that would be a pretty cool thing to have 
One thing I wish this could do is give you the option to switch between POV and that picture-in-picture -picture or the side-by-side. -side. From what I can tell, it just gives you that option and that option only. And you have to kind of exit out of your stream so things will go to BRB, etc. If you can make that work, great, awesome. I'd love to see it. Stabilization. So this I mentioned in another video, video stabilization. And I've found, at least with my phone, uh, maybe because it has a high resolution natively, it's able to provide a somewhat stable looking video. And there are options here for my phone. We've got standard cinematic, cinematic extended, auto. I've chosen standard because it seems to be the least laggy of them. Because it can get even more smoother, but I think the audio is affected. So your voice might be out of sync from the video. Uh, but wait, I've got it set to 3000, but depending on where you are, you might have to lower that to something else. And bitrate is how good a quality your video is when it's pushed out to the internet. You could try and do higher, but that could also make your stream very choppy. So I recommend 3000 or lower, maybe 1500, but just try, see what you can get away with. Uh, in my area where I live in Auckland, I've been okay with 3000. But uh, the very important one here is format. Hefk. To choose this because that is a much more efficient uh, video format that's pushed out through the SRT connection. So definitely choose that. If your phone has it, I think some older phones don't have HEFC. They can only do 264. If, if that's all you've got, then use 264. But if you can use HEFC, it's, it's much more efficient. I'm going to exit out of there, go through to the next option, which is audio. Audio input, I've got it to auto, but you can choose which one you want. The input gain, so I've dialed that down for my microphone. Uh, for your one, if you're using a phone or something else, uh, you'll want to adjust that. So you can also choose or use audio engine. I've turned off voice processing, so it can make the audio sound a little bit funny, but uh, just, just play around with those, turn them on off, and see how your phone handles them. Next up, you can record the stream and then that gets saved to your phone. It's a pretty handy feature if you tend on maybe repurposing your content to YouTube, other places. So let's say something really critical happened when your mobile connection was down, then you kind of miss all of that. So this is a nice thing to have. Of course, it depends on your memory. How much memory does your phone have? Can it handle recording like uh, maybe four, five, six, 10, 11 hour stream. It's in there if you want to turn that option on or off. There's quite a bit in here which you want to go through. I think I'll just turn that off for now. Overlays. So I've got show layers on preview. I've got that set to yes. Pause overlays. This is the custom image that I have displayed while my stream is paused. This one here, web widgets. Here is what I have got for Twitch chat. There's some CSS code, which I'll have a link to in the description. Um, basically that makes it see-through or transparent. I've set it to preview. I can see it, but my chat and my stream can't. You can also have alerts set to preview mode as well. Uh, which is what I have so that when I look down at my phone, I can see that someone has followed. So we're going to scroll down. I've got the width and the height all set. You can adjust the size and position. So here, as well as able to realign the chat, move it across so it wasn't covering that flip camera button. And then it just adjusts the width, the height, everything for you. And then we have this one for alerts. I believe Larix Broadcaster, they haven't yet allowed stream elements and web widgets but they do for stream labs so i did have to use their particular alert system if you want those alerts you can use stream labs and i use a combination of a whole bunch of services so stream elements stream labs etc so there's two really important uh, features there it's going to go down to the advanced section so here as you can see we've got max active connections we've got three i believe these are all default um, but just compare with what you've got reconnect timeout three seconds Without network, I've got that at 10 seconds. So if your network is down, your screen will go black for 10 seconds and then it will tell my software back at home in the office to switch to the BRB scene. So that part, yeah, we will be covering in the next video. So just copy these, see how they work for you. You might want to adjust them. But basically you want that without network part to be fairly long. You don't want it to sort of go switch into BRB straight away. And my BRB is just plays YouTube videos uh, from my account. We'll, we'll cover that in the next video. And that's basically it, I think. 
I'll try and get things so you guys can see. So this is the phone that I'll use for streaming. Hi there, hi guys, how you doing, how you doing? And then on this other one, this is where we would type in something like, hi, hi chat. And then it, you might've heard that through the TTS. Now normally I'd have my Bluetooth headset on so that I can hear what people are typing in. I can see the message there on, on this main phone. So let's say there was someone else and we go, sup? I think we've talked long enough for today. Hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for the next one because there's even more to cover.